Good day and welcome to the Herbert Denard Show. We have with us this morning uh, Thomas Hudson uh, from the Board of Education. How you doing? Doing great. Great day to be alive. <laughs> great day to be alive. You know what I think? Yeah. Every day is a good day to be alive. That's so true. So true. <laughs> Tell me, uh, recently uh, the superintendent has come up with and the Board of Education has come up with Make a Miracle Plan. Tell us exactly what is the Make a Miracle Plan. The Make a Miracle Plan is not to overhaul the Bibb County school system is to change the Bibb County school system because we have to be prepared for 21st century learning. We have a superintendent who is stepping outside of the box, 174 points in terms of his plan, and I think he did a good job of delivering it on uh, Friday at the Macon Coliseum. And one of the things that was very touching to me, which I was well aware of his story, when he told his story, coming up out of Haiti and living in poverty, uh, had three or four points he shouldn't have made it. One in poverty, had a mother who did not finish school. She stopped in the sixth grade. He went to uh, Brooklyn, New York, and for the first time at 15 years of age, he had to learn uh, English as a third language. And then for him to be a superintendent at 38, he understand the plight of all people in our school district, the ones who live in, 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 in destitute situations, as well as the ones who are very fortunate. But he did not use that as an excuse. He used it as to be determined to be successful. And uh, I think he has done something that no one else has done when it comes down to public education in Bibb County. He has really caused Macon to rise up and to speak out. And I think that's a plus too. And I think with the plan, with any plan, it's a proposed plan. We are going to have continuous input from the public. And it was not a plan that he just dumped on the public. When he came in, he engaged the community. I mean, with the two sessions we had at the Macon Coliseum, which was well attended and it was diverse as the community is. And we listened to those things. And he had staff to compile the information. And then he delivered it back to them. And we are going to have another forum and other opportunities where individuals can give input and feedback. But on many occasions, people do not read and they listen to what other people say. But I think yesterday he was able to clarify a lot of misconceptions. This is not like a plan you wake up tomorrow and we've totally revamped the Bill County School District. That's not the case. It's a plan that will be phased in over a five or seven year period of time. Naturally, anytime you have a plan, sometimes you gotta tweet it here and there. You have to make modifications and then you have to have a plan to evaluate it too. But I think that it's a good start and it definitely woke up Macon, and I think the best is yet to come. And collectively, I think that people, uh, people back the plan, and you know they express some concerns about things they would like for us to change. And one thing I think is very good is the fact that we we're talking about year-round school, because of the fact that's not something that's unusual. It happened in many other places, because of the fact you keep on a continu continuous path of learning, teaching, and learning. Because you have kids out of school for two, a month, two months or so during the summer, then you have to start back with the discipline and everything else to get them reacclimated to the ac uh, academic environment by having year-round school, I think it would be great. In fact, students will have more breaks, and it's not like they'll get burned out because they have breaks uh, probably more than they're having now, and it'll be a more balanced. And also the thing, too, a lot of people concerned about is that of discipline. He addressed that yesterday. We want to look at um, programs designed to get the kids out of school who continue, continue to interrupt the learning process, but make sure they're in a structured and I underline structured environment so that they would change those behaviors. And then it'll be a transitional period back into regular school after they've gone through a series of training. Another thing that he talked about, which is very important, we have to engage the whole community. He talked about uh, working with juvenile justice, uh, juvenile, uh, juvenile justice department to make sure that the kids are punished appropriately for their offenses. And it's not our desire to send them there, but some kids unfortunately will wind up going through the juvenile justice process. But the bottom line is we want to put programs in place 
to prevent that. That's why we're working with DFAGs and other social service agencies because many of our uh, parents who have children in school districts are receiving certain type benefits and unfortunately a lot of our uh, parents in the school district have not graduated from school and they need to be held accountable because as parents we are responsible for our children and we need to make sure they go to school they respect authority, respect themselves and that's important, but we spend a lot of time trying to correct behaviors that should have been taught at home. And therefore, to be part of the plan is that parents would have to come at least twice a year to take parenting classes and other classes because education is a continuous process as long as we are open-minded and receptive for learning. And so I think it's all-inclusive so that we have some for everyone. And then plus the community has an invested interest in education too. Because we as homeowners and taxpayers, we pay, you know, for public education, education. We also pay for indigent care when people cannot afford or don't have a job or insurance. We as taxpayers pay for that. And the more people are educated in this community, it attract more business and more jobs. And that's what it's all about, is bringing people into middle Georgia and improving and enhancing the quality of education. Because the ultimate goal is is to make sure that a person can live anywhere and be a kind and their kids will get the same type of education. And all of our schools are doing a great job of educating students. We're just not educating enough of them. And there's a direct correlation between parental involvement and lack of parental involvement. So we need more parents to get involved because they want to dump everything on the school. And there are certain parents, because of their active involvement with their kids' lives, you can pretty much predict, at minimum, they will graduate from school. Now, I guarantee you, all of your children graduate from high school. That's right. Because you're an educated person, you value an education, and you want your children to make sure that they receive a good education so they can become independent. Someone told me that Bibb County only graduates about 50 percent. Uh, actually, it's less than last year. It was less than 50 percent of the students graduate from high school, and there's a direct correlation between dropout rate versus incarceration rate. Because people who do not drop out of school is people who drop out of school is very difficult for them to compete for a job because you're not just competing with students of Bibb County and Macon. Internationally, you have people from all different countries coming here competing for jobs. And if you don't have a high school education or GED, it's very difficult in order to get that. And there are basic human needs we have. We have to have food, clothing, and shelter, and we want transportation. If, you don't, if young people don't have a way to get that, many times they resort to criminal behaviors, which is indicative of the number of people that's locked up in jail in Bibb County. And it all started, when you look at a lot of them who were there, they do not have a high school education. Okay. Let me go back to something. It's a small, it's small to me and small to a lot of people, but a lot of people are talking about it. Mm -hmm. Why should uh, American students in Bibb County, why should they learn Chinese? Uh, just for the <coughs> China, I mean, it's a, company, a country that's very well, and I think our kids need more exposure and stuff. You'd be surprised the number of kids in Macon, Bibb County, who never left out of Bibb County, never been to Atlanta, never left out of the county. If parents had been there yesterday, and especially young people, if they had seen those young people from China on that stage performing and also speaking the English language better than some of us, and that's a second language for them, uh, we need to make sure that our kids can speak several di different languages and therefore it will not limit them in terms of their abilities and stuff. Because when a child graduates from high school, goes to college, and get out and start competing for jobs, they're competing internationally. You have people from all over the world that's coming here and stuff, and it makes them more diverse in, the, in being able to speak different languages. And also, it's proven that once they learn to speak Chinese, it opens up the opportunity to learn a whole lot more for us it sounds like different we're looking at symbols or what have you but see kids they learn the most during the informative years and we start teaching this uh, in grade school and preschool I mean it would be a natural for them and then we have to learn to appreciate other cultures too because we have more in common than not 
And it's not unusual for uh, most people, this old expression is who's the person who speak, uh, you know, uh, multiple language, and they talk about other people. And they say, what about America? We speak what? One well, language. Sometimes don't do a, too good a job of mastering that. So therefore, we need to open up that. I mean, we need to put uh, on the menu seven different languages that young people can learn because they can pick from the menu. What about the closing of schools? Uh, one Is that because is Bill County getting smaller, the school system getting smaller? No, actually our, our system is holding steady at close to around 25,000 students. But in many of the schools, they are not at capacity in terms of the numbers. For example, it may be uh, the capacity may be 400, we have 250. There are some schools that's in close prox proximity to each other, and then we will look at that in terms of trying to minimize the dis disruption from parents getting the kids back and forth to school. But that's a gradual process to be phased in. It's not like it said up to 12 schools. It didn't say definitely 12 schools, maybe four or five, maybe six. And remotely, it could be that many, but it would be over a period of time. Because when we had to do redistricting, we looked at the population itself based on needs and stuff. So therefore, we would have to, that would be carefully studied, and then recommendation would come to the board as to which schools should be combined. So it's not like uh, it's going to happen overnight. As I said before, this may be a five, six, or seven year plan before it's fully implemented. And then it's, it's, a, it's something, uh, it's a work in progress. You know, we're always changing, and we have to make changes when changes are necessary, but you have to have a plan, and I think it's a good plan. And once the plan is tweeted a little bit after receiving more public support, then I think we need to go ahead on and vote on it and roll it out and get started. Let me tell you a concern I have, and I'm, I'm, I'm a big, big supporter of the superintendent. Mm -hmm. my, my plan, my idea is if, if this lasts five years or six years, the superintendent might not be here. Well, see, if he's doing well, mm -hmm. somebody's going to snatch him up. You bring in a new superintendent, he might not be committed to children learning Chinese. He might not be committed to children uh, changing schools. He might be have a totally different concept. If this superintendent stay here, if he said his plan going to last seven years, if he's going to be here seven years, you know, that's good. But if he takes off, cause some, if he's good and he is good, mm -hmm. somebody offered him more money, a bigger position, a larger city, a larger district, he leaves. I'm wondering then if that happened, what happens then? Okay, you made a key point. First of all, it's a plan. And once a plan is well organized, it has been tested, re-evaluated, re redefined. It's a plan. And the plan is an inclusive plan because it's not just a plan of the Bill County Board of Education and the superintendent. It's a plan that was collectively put together with input from the community, and also we've had feedback and we're going to make modifications. So it's, it's called the Macon Miracle. It should be called the Macon Bibb County Miracle. So it's our plan. No one is indispensable. That's the reason why you have a plan. If the superintendent should leave, or uh, the superintendent works at the pleasure of the board, and the board work at the pleasure of the people in this community. So if we're all in support of this plan, if the superintendent should leave, which I hope he does not, then we'll bring someone else in and we will carry out the plan because the plan will be so well laid out and defined until the public and the community as a whole will be in support of the plan. And like I said, you leave room for changes and modifications as necessary. But once you have a plan, then you have something to operate from. And that's what he's doing. He's putting together a plan. And like I said, he's building a new system because the one that we have is not working and we are in the 19th century in terms of things we're doing and we got to move into the 21st century and we are fortunate to have a superintendent who thinks outside of the box who's not afraid to dream because he knows what dreams will bring bring to him into the district. 